Hey cats, it's about that time again. Another episode of Running Shoe, yay or nay? Welcome back to the channel, people, or it could be your first time here. In which case, where have you been? My name's Ed Midsole Bud, and this is my strange corner of the internet, mainly talking about running shoe reviews, gear reviews, and race recaps. Help us out to continue to grow by hitting that subscribe button, but also clicking that bell for notifications too. Give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. Danke schön. Running Shoe Yay On A is a series where I look at forthcoming or soon to be released running shoes and let you know whether I'm gonna pick them up or not. It could be that I just don't feel the shoe's gonna fit into my shoe rotation. It might not be something that's gonna work for me either. It's not me saying that the shoe's trash or anything like that. I can't know that unless I got it on foot and in hand. So just to clear that up, sometimes people get a bit confused. Why is this bloke talking about a load of running shoes that he doesn't own? I'm not reviewing them here. I'm just kind of taking a look and telling you whether I'm gonna pick them up. Right, we got four big ones up for you today. The Hoka Rocket X2, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro, the Reebok Floatride Energy 5, and the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. Let's kick it off with the Hoka Rocket X2. Now, this is a shoe that has gathered lots of interest from the viewers. When I ran that poll recently on the community section of the channel, loads of you wanted to see this one. People are seriously pumped up about the Hoka Rocket X2, maybe with so many early reviews pouring more petrol onto the flames. Could it really be the holy grail like the Vaporfly Destroyer? Every time people say this, I'm often like, okay. So it's the first of Hoka shoes to use a P-back space midsole foam, though I'm seeing a higher weight measurement of 236 grams for the sample size. So I mean, that's pretty considerable really uh, for this type of shoe when you consider that that new Vaporfly 3 is around about two, three, four or something in my size. That's in my size 11 UK, not the sample size, okay? So the Rocket X2 does look like it's a slightly more beefy shoe. And I'm not talking about both of them. Perhaps there's a bit more bulk in the upper and the outsole, perhaps. I'm not super bothered by weight, but for race shoes, man, then it matters to me, okay? I want to feel gazelle-like, fleet-footed, nimble. I don't want to put some clog on and it just slow me down. It does look like there's a considerable sidewall here, and when you consider that there's a 36 millimeter stack, it's not totally maxed out by any means. I imagine they'll probably leave that for the Carbon X. This is a little bit more like the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2 in the profile that is. 36 millimeters in the heel, 31 in the forefoot. So it's only a five mil drop here in the Rocket X2. Perhaps that's better if you prefer that alpha fly like feel where you almost feel as if you're squashing into the back of the shoe. It's like a negative drop. I think you often get that when you've got a considerable rocker in the forefoot of the shoe and that squashy foam stack in the rear, you kind of sink back into it. At 219, it's a powerful price from a brand that hasn't really worked out for me all that well in recent years. But the viewers have spoken and they've said that they want to see this shoe. So I'll see if I can pick it up. I want to try and get some discount on that 219. That's just a lot of money to gamble on a shoe that just might not fit all that well. Hoka lasts are just really odd on my feet. They don't seem to be as glove-like as I would like. Like like though i'm really confused about this shoe why they've even bothered to call it the rocket x2 it doesn't seem to have any similarity really with the previous version why not just come up with a new model name for this one gotta be honest i'm still on the fence about it a little bit but okay let's move along now to the Reebok Floatride Energy 5. The latest in the Floatride series. I think this is about as easy as a yay as you're ever gonna get really for me. Always enjoyed the Floatride model and I don't see anything here to suggest why I won't like the new one. Reebok have switched up the materials once again in this 2023 version with what appears to be a thicker mesh and a much lower profile ankle area. More padding in the tongue over the V4 as well. I was gonna show you that one, but I've lost it. I'm not entirely sure where it is. One of them's there, but I haven't got the other one. Yeah, there was a really thin tongue in this version of the shoe, and I don't think everybody enjoyed that. I think perhaps the Energy 5 may have a slightly plusher feeling here overall. More changes in the midsole here with a bit more shaping to it. They've refined things a little bit. It's less of a slab. It looks like they've cut out some sections. Very similar to what they did, I suppose, in the Reebok Floatride Energy X. Just placing the foam into the real areas where you need it. I've always found the Floatride foam to be pretty much bang on in terms of softness to response ratio. It's exactly what you want from a daily running shoe. More changes in the midsole too with some type of plastic 
plastic section added in the arch area. I think that's perhaps to reduce the flex that you get between the back and the front sections of the shoe, a little bit like a torsion system. The typical lugs in the outsole rubber here as the last couple of energy iterations. I think those will be up to the challenge. I got basically no wear on those at around about 100 miles. Now, these seem to be released in the UK already. I don't know if they've dropped in other places around the world, but it's an absolute yay on the Reebok Flickride Energy 5. You know, 75 pounds, how do Reebok do it? I'm sure you can find some sort of discount as well to get that down even lower. So watch out for my review on that one very soon. Shoe 3 is another one that you cats have been calling for, the Mizuno Wave Rebellion Pro. It's a shoe that's become linked with the black and white static light upper colorway. Now I've only tested out a couple of Mizuno shoes over the last few years. They were okay, you know, there's a dollop of mystique about them, I suppose. Don't forget the mystique, very important. I really like the splatter-like paint on the sidewalls of the midsole. Quite the art school attempt there from Mizuno. Almost graffiti-like, I suppose. Reminds me of walking through a subway. Entirely sure that's something that you really want from a running shoe, but there you go. Obviously the Mizuno version of the now classic 39mm maxed out midsole shoe here. Though a slightly lower drop, I think you got about 33mm in the forefoot. So it's certainly not going to feel like the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit, which was like you were standing on the edge of a cliff waiting to drop off. I think one for those that like that rolling action with quite a chunk out of the heel area there. When you think about it, it sort of looks like it's going to be quite jarring, doesn't it? But, but it certainly looks like it will roll you from the heel to the forefoot there, helping in the transition. Mizuno suggests this is a carbon-infused plate. Now, the last time I heard that phrase was back in the Nike Zoom Fly. That appeared to have a carbon-infused nylon plate. So whether this is the same thing, I don't know. I'm not sure anyone's mad enough to saw open a pair of these so far. Certainly the Wave Rebellion Pro looks a little bit more alluring than some of the options from the past. Too many of those early competitor shoes to the Vaporfly or way too bulky. Other brands have noted this, Mizuno being one of them. Many of you seem to love this one, so will I also like it? To be honest, I'm going to have to do some very serious thinking about this one. Another 200 smackaroonies, it's a lot of cash to spend perhaps on a shoe that just isn't quite there. I've got a load of super shoes in that I can race in. Do I really need another one right now? A little bit on the fence here. Do I need all that bulk? Is it going to be any better than the rest? So I'm not dead set on a 200 earth credit gamble right now. I need to do a little bit more research on this and then make a decision. So for the time being, it's a nay on the Wave Rebellion Pro from Mizuno. Getting a bit cheaper and cheerful now for the fourth shoe in today's yay or nay. It's the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. So Puma's first version of their shorter distance and lower stack Nitro shoe was a great low cost option when it dropped a couple of years ago. The new version looks to me to be a cut down version of the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. Obviously no carbon plate in the Liberate Nitro 2 like you get in the Elite 2. And the foam switched up, it's different, it's just the standard Nitro stuff. But we have the same profile aesthetics and midsole shape they all look very similar to the more expensive race model much lower price though many retailers selling it at just under a hundred pounds here in the uk that makes it a great pace shoe or perhaps one you can use for shorter distances could be like a great alternative i suppose to something like the adios 7 if that's really worked for you over the last year or so an eight mil drop this time though perhaps a counterpart shoe to the elite perhaps you could use this one in training perhaps saving the elite shoe for the race day an outsole that mimics the deviate nitro elite 2 with that puma grip traction that's second to none right now see it ain't half similar what do you reckon people Puma reckon on this one being about 179 grams in the sample size. That is ridiculously low for such a cheap shoe as well. Crazy light, though I do take the info on the website with a pinch of salt. They do list the shoe as being an 8mm drop in one place and a 6mm drop in the other. Either way, I think with the price being where it is for the Liberate Nitro 2, it's worthy of a whirl. I want to see just how good the Puma running lineup is stocked this year. Some really good options right across the board from Max Cushion with the Forever and Nitro through to this one perhaps. They're bringing the challenge to some of the other brands in a big way. So it's a yay for the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. That's all the shoes in today's yay or nay. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments. Before I get to the musical interlude today, just to let you know, we'll be in Weymouth on the 19th of March. 
I'm running the Weymouth Half Marathon, so really looking forward to that one. If you're around, come and say hi. Gonna head over there today for a bit of record shopping and just generally mooching about beforehand. I gotta do a gig in the evening, but at least I'll be reasonably nearby so I can get some half decent rest for once. So hopefully see you in Weymouth, Dorset on the 19th. Okay, musical interlude time. I've been hyping myself up, getting myself in the race mindset. And the only way to do that is with ACDC. Just seems to stir certain emotions in me. Quite aggressive emotions, I suppose. I always find myself not being able to motivate myself enough during training to perhaps hit certain paces and things. But Angus and the lads helped me do that. Let There Be Rock is today's track. I was inspired by my son. He seems to have picked up on the words now. Let there be light, let there be sound, let there be drums and let there be guitars. I really like the whole ethos of it really. All the verses kind of talking about how rock and roll has come to be and that we get to enjoy this sort of wonderful sound. The movement of air that just sort of propels you and gives you that certain feeling which is exactly the feeling i'm after when it comes to racing i think there's something to be said about trying to be calm when you're training and when you're racing even perhaps but for me i'm kind of calm the rest of the time so it's about like raising things up a little bit putting myself in more like of an alert zone and this song really does get me there so let there be rock acdc there's just so many good tunes you could pretty much make a whole playlist with ACDC stuff for race day. Thanks for tuning in people, hope you enjoyed today's video. Please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications. Hit us up with a super thanks as well, it really does help the channel out on a more ad hoc basis. My name's Ed Bird and I'll be seeing you.